The Yankees have apparent interest in this free agent, and in my opinion, it makes zero sense. I'm going to rip into them. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, I hope you are having a stupendous day today. If you love the Yankees, but you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe, especially if you want to be kept up to date with the latest New York Yankees news or just for plain old New York Yankees discussion. So they're in on this free agent and I, I am not happy about it. But let's talk about the other two players they are interested in first, because I am happy about that. Let's start off with Phil Maton, who pitched for the Houston Astros last season. He had a nice year for them. A 3.00 earned run average, 74 strikeouts in 66 innings pitched. Maton, though, does not throw very hard, topping out at 89, 90 miles per hour. But he typically relies on his breaking stuff, throwing his curveball over 40% of the time. I think he would be a nice weapon to have in that bullpen because let's face it, everybody and their mother, their sister, your sister, your everybody throws 98 miles per hour. He barely tops out at 90. I think that's a good weapon to have because, hey, the change of speeds, the nasty breaking stuff that he possesses, bring it on, baby. Sign me up for that. I would love me some Phil Maton in that near Yankee bullpen. But they're also in on former Boston Red Sox, Ryan Brazier. Now, Brazier last season had a very, very weird year. Pitched 20 innings with the Red Sox. He was horrible. A 7.29 earned run average. He was bad. They DFA'd him. The the Dodgers picked him up. In almost 40 innings pitched, had a 0.70 earned run average. I don't know what happened. I don't know why that guy was so damn good with the Dodgers, but if he's that good, bring him to me, baby. Bring him to the Yankees. He's a former Red Sox, though, spent six seasons with them. But hey, there's no denying his success that he had with the Dodgers last year. Let's talk about, finally, let's talk about this free agent that I am just baffled. If this is true, I am baffled that the Yankees are in on him. If it's true, this might just be Scott Boris trying to drive the price up and trying to say, hey, if you want Juan Soto next year, he's my, he's my guy. If you want Juan Soto, if you help me drive the price up for this other guy, then maybe I'll go easy on you. Maybe he's doing that. I don't know. But the Yankees apparently are interested in freaking Matt Chapman. Doesn't make any sense. Matt Chapman, very good defender. Last season, though, offensively hit 240, 17 home runs, had a 755 OPS. He was okay. He was fine offensively. He's very good defensively. He's going to cost you $18 million at least per season. He might get $20, $22 million per year. Not worth it. You have DJ LeMahieu, who you're paying $15 million. You need a spot for him. You have Rizzo over there at first base. You have Glaber Torres over there at second base. You don't have a spot for Matt Chapman. There is no spot. So if you're bringing in Matt Chapman, you're telling me one of two things. Maybe Glaber Torres is getting moved. Maybe. But then there's something else. And then you could put DJ over there at second base, Chapman there at third base, Riz at first, he'll stay there. Bada bing, bada boom, Volpe at short, bam, there you go. But there's another guy in all of this, and that's Peraza. What do you do with him? He didn't have a very long leash last year. Call up, send down, called up, send down. Yes, 170 at-bats, I get it. And he didn't really perform very well offensively. But when you're being called up and sent down so many damn times, how can you get into a flow? How can you get into a rhythm? You can't. So Peraza at least deserves that. So if you're getting Chapman and you still have a Glaber and you still have LeMahieu, what are you doing? If anything, if anything, this is where I'm getting fired up. If anything, pay Glaber Torres. For some reason, Yankee fans are weird. For some reason, they still don't like him. And he was one of our, if not our most consistent offensive player last year. 800 OPS, 24 home runs. 
led the team in batting average and were all, oh, Glaber stinks. Pay Glaber Torres before going out and getting Chapman. I don't get that. I don't understand that. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that any real interest there is in Chapman, that it's fake. Unless you're patching, you're, you're, you're packaging, you're packaging up DJ LeMayhew tomorrow. Unless you're doing that. But Chapman's going to cost you probably 20 mil. Not worth it. I'd rather go through the growing pains of having Peraza, who's going to cost you, what, five something? 500? 600? Thousand, of course. Better than 20 million. Chapman also strikes out a bunch. We don't need that in this lineup. We don't, I would rather just watch Peraza develop. Once upon a time, the Yankees could have put Peraza in a package for Matt Olson, and they didn't. So if you just want to give up on him now, you are silly. That's a nice way of saying it. You are silly. So listen, Matt Chapman doesn't fit here. He doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Also, too, I didn't mention, forgot to mention, the Yankees will lose two draft picks, international bonus money, if they sign Chapman. They gave him a qualifying offer. The Blue Jays did. He he did not take it. So now you would lose a lot by even signing him. Just go sign Blake Snell at that point, honestly. Just go sign him. Like I said, if the Yankees are working on a different move and then get Matt Chapman, okay. But he doesn't fit right now. It doesn't make any sense to get him. None. Absolutely none. You might like Chapman. That's okay. I don't think he fits here. It's clear he doesn't. So listen. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments. If the Yankees were to get an infielder, why couldn't you just go out and get Candelario? I would have loved to have him. Doubles machine. Switch hitter. I would have loved to have him. Chapman strikes out a lot, hits righty. Don't want him. I'm sorry. I don't want him. Maybe I'm wrong. It's fine. Matt Chapman does not fit here. You guys let me know what you think about this, though, down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. We have channel memberships in the description if that interests you. This is Joe, and until next time, signing out. And to all of our channel members here at The Shift, thank you guys. It means a lot.